Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to me sitting down and actually talking about something serious. <laughs> uh, quite a few of the videos that I'm going to be filming today are of the serious nature. That's why I've got my cup of tea. But the last video I'll be filming is going to be a good one. So uh, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. If you like the content that's on the channel, please also share it and repost it. It really, really helps me out a lot. Whether you're doing it on Instagram, YouTube, I really don't mind where you do it. Uh, welcome to the family. This is a great family. We, 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 we have a good time here and we'd love for you to join the family. So just click that subscribe button it's free 99 let's do the absolute most i really would appreciate it thank you so much give me a follow on my social media and let's be friends okay i just want to be friends okay yo i really would like to talk to you guys about rejection as you can see in the description bar below and in the title of the video we are going to be talking about rejection how this video came about was really weird for me because I was reading uh, two novels. I am currently reading two novels at once. And in two separate incidences, uh, the main character felt rejected. And I was just like, oh man, I really thought back to my experiences of when I felt rejected or the last time I felt rejected and what I went through and all of that. And um, for me, being an advocate of mental health and an advocate of, you know, being okay within yourself, rejection does play a big role on mental health because it affects you mentally, right? You think about it. You think about why. Why did I get rejected? Why is this happening to me? They, there's questions that come in with regards to self-loathing, self-worth, you know, embarrassment sadness rejection bitterness uh and all of those things and if you're somebody who struggles with mental health like i do um that takes its toll on you again i'm going to add that the sun is coming in and out of the clouds i'm really really sorry about that but it's going to be far too hot if i switch on my softbox lights i'm sorry sorry just just a sidetrack so because of it i actually thought about it quite a bit and I was at work reading this novel and I also put up an Instagram post of um you know for people to share with me their experiences of the last time they felt rejected and this birthed this video so let's get into the video so when was the last time that you felt rejected when was the last time you were rejected how did it make you feel a lot of the time when we think about rejection we automatically uh, attribute it to personal relationships between a girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, parent, child, uh, and all of that. But rejection can come in so many forms. You can feel rejected from an interview that didn't go right. Or they tell you that, um, sorry, just before you come to the interview, they tell you, sorry, we've already found somebody uh, for the job, so you don't have to come in. So it can be from a relationship with a worker, with a colleague. It can be uh, feeling rejected from a friendship. It can be feeling rejected from um, a play. Maybe you wanted... Uh, the top role in a theatrical production and they chose somebody else over you there's so many ways in which we can feel rejected right so so many ways and with each and every single different way of being rejected the result the feeling that comes from that is always the same so you always have the feeling of anger sometimes bitterness resentment embarrassment you're constantly feeling like, you know, your self-worth is being put into question. When somebody says to you, I just don't want you anymore. And you're thinking to yourself, I've wanted you all this time. How do you not want me? Why? What did I do? And you start thinking about all these questions. It actually also puts into question your um, sense of progression in life and your sense of work ethic and what you've achieved in your workspace why why am i being rejected am i not good enough you start thinking about all these things and um at the end of the day it plays on you so so much and i felt the need to do this video because i felt like i wanted to share ways through also watching many other videos on YouTube, so these aren't only my suggestions, but also through watching many other videos on YouTube, I wanted to share um, what you can do 
to make you feel better after being rejected, whether it be by a parent, work, colleague, friend, and, and, and anything, what you can do to make you feel better because rejection hits all of us and girl, <laughs> it sucks. So for me, point number one is accept the response after being rejected. Now, this is really, really hard because immediately after you are rejected, you automatically go either into defense mode, you get sad, you get whatever you don't, you're not thinking logically, you're already getting into a space where you're like, why, why, what did I do, blah, blah, blah. But I would also always suggest that Point number one is to accept the response. This is very, very important, especially in a work situation or especially in a relationship situation, whether with a parent, whether with a lover, whether with um, friends, any kind of interpersonal relationship. It is so important to accept the response because what happens if you, if you don't accept the response that you get? that rejection that you have been given. If you do not accept that, you're going to instantly want to know why, try by all means to, no, please be my friend. I know I messed it up. I know whatever, whatever. But you need to accept that that person has felt or that institution has felt you're not the right fit or has felt that they've, that's it. They, they, they've taken you on for all the time that they had. Now they have to let you go. It feels like a form of rejection. Your partner breaking up with you when you least saw it coming. It feels like a form of rejection. What have I done? You have to accept the fact that there is something in them that doesn't require you anymore. And as, ha as, and as hurtful as that may seem and sound, it is very hurtful. And I don't like hurting people. Okay. I don't, I don't. But as hurtful as that may seem and sound, it is very important to know that they just, I'm just not their fit. I'm just not his fit or her fit. I'm just not my father's fit, my estranged father's fit. It has nothing to do with you. Once you get to the point where you accept that this is not on me, it's on that person and not on me or that institution and not on me, you are more equipped to understand that it doesn't have anything to do with me. It's all on them. So you, you're more equipped to deal with the rejection much better. Do you understand? Am I making any sense? I hope I am. Point number two for me is allow yourself to feel and go through the rejection, right? So you've accepted the response you've received from whoever you received it from. Now you need to allow yourself the opportunity to feel the, the, the pain that's going to come with that rejection. So allow yourself to feel the sadness. Allow yourself to feel the embarrassment in some points. Allow yourself to feel the, the tinge of the, you know, the, the questionable self-worth. Allow yourself to feel like you're not good enough. Allow it. It's only a day, it's not a life. Now, you can allow yourself to feel it, and we don't want to ever feel like we're not good enough. And I'm going to be doing a video about not being good enough, so I'm not going to touch on to that. However, we don't ever want to feel like we're not good enough, but allow yourself to go through these emotions because you are entitled to feel sad. You are entitled to feel embarrassed. You are entitled to feel rejected. You are entitled to feel... Um, like there's some something wrong with you when at the end of the day there isn't because once you feel all of that again it puts you in a space where there's the sun again again it puts you in a space where you can be better equipped to deal with that rejection going forward and how you address it going forward without losing your mind without wanting to 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 you know go crazy and and calling the institution multiple times and saying but what did i do explain to me what did i do why are you letting me go blah 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 without losing your shits to be honest so you allow yourself to go through the fields because you deserve to go through the fields it hurts to be rejected right it hurts but allow yourself to go through that so that you can move on to the next step which is this. The next step that I would highly, highly suggest and recommend if you have people that care about you in your life, if you've got your friends and you've got your family and you've got whoever else is not part of who or what rejected you, confide in them. This is a very important step because 
knowing that there are people that you can talk to and people that you can ask ask them the questions why didn't they why didn't they why didn't they pick me why did did i do something wrong when i rehearsed this is how i did it but confide in those people because often a lot of the time those are the people that are going to encourage you those are the people that are going to say listen I understand that it hurts. If you have the right people around you, I understand that it hurts. I understand that you're going through what you're going through, but honestly, you're, you, you're, you're going to be okay. You're better than that. You know what? They lost. It's their loss. It's their loss. That has nothing to do with you. It's their loss. Let them lose out on you. You are a great person in and of yourself, so don't worry about it. You need to have a very strong support structure when you are going through a rejection because that support structure structure that support structure will be what builds you up going forward so you need to be able to speak to them and confide in them maybe they'll tell you something about yourself or about that audition or about that job or about that that you didn't know that you overlook because when you think about yourself you think i'm a great employee i'm a great friend but maybe they're i'm a great lover but maybe there are certain things about you that aren't that great. And people who know you very well and know what your situation was with regards to that one particular thing are going to sit and say to you, yeah, but bro, listen, listen, you kind of did A, B, C, and D. Or you kind of need to understand that A, B, C, and D, you know? So it's really, really important for the, to surround yourself with people who support you, who will be there to also not criticize, but constructively show you parts of yourself that you might not be familiar with. But more than anything, they're going to give you the love and support that you need in that time. So, so important to be around people like that. That's point number three. Now, point number four is now the moving forward process. So you need to focus on aspects of yourself that build you, that you love. So anything from a passion project that you're working on, if you need to relax, if you want to take, um, you know, some time out, if you, aspects about yourself that build you, that grow you, focus on aspects of yourself that you love. So you can do anything that brings you any kind of joy. If you want to take a drive because it makes you, it opens your mind, it clears you up a little bit. You want to take a little break, a little holiday, just to forget about this rejection or whatever. Do that. Focus on things that bring you immense joy and contempt, contentment, not contempt, <laughs> contentment, right? So things that make you happy, things that maybe you have a passion project. Maybe you've got YouTube and YouTube makes you happy. Maybe you're an Instagram influencer and that makes you happy. Focus on things that are going to help distract you um, because you need to now move away from this feeling of sadness and embarrassment and self-loathing and low self-worth and self-doubt and all of that and you need to tap into parts of yourself that you that make you you that make you a be better and happier you parts of yourself that you excel in so it's really really important to focus on things like that so a lot of the time you'll find that when people get rejected as a way to distract themselves they jump into whatever that 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 um they 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 can focus on that 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 makes them happy so youtube for me is a very happy space so i know that when i'm going through a really tough time uh, or i'm sad about something or whatever i often switch on my camera and when i do i end up feeling so much better than i did when i started or the period before i started so it's really important to focus on things that you excel in a passion project you like to go on holidays, do that if you can afford it. Uh, all those things that really just make you a better version of yourself, focus on that. It really, really helps. It really, really helps. Much like this tea is helping me right now. Right. And then the very last thing, and it wouldn't be the Just Got Leo channel if I didn't mention this. Practice self-care and self-love. This is very important. You are coming out of a space where you are doubting yourself, where you feel low in self-esteem, where you feel low in confidence, where you feel just downright low. Very important for you to now start focusing on your passion projects and all of this and all of that, but also practicing self-love. This will remind you of who you are and what you're about 
and what you care for and things that spark joy in your life. Practicing self-love and self-care reminds you that you know what, these are the things that make me content. And these are the things you, 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 you inwardly look at yourself and you look after your mental health. It's very, very important. Practicing self-care and self-love is an ode. It's, it's, it's a poem. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a speech of love and care to your mental health. So it's really, really important for you to practice some sort of self-love, especially, especially after having felt rejected. Okay, so self-love and self-care also comes in the form of eating well, sleeping enough, going to the gym. You don't want to go to the gym. You don't want to work out. Fine. That's not your thing. Fine. Do whatever it takes. You like to paint. You like to, you're an artist of sorts. You're an illustrator. I just thought of Mbali. That's why I said illustrator. You're an illustrator. You just, whatever it is that brings you some sense of joy and sparks joy within you, do that. That is practicing self-love and self-care upon yourself. And at that point, you will realize that that rejection is like a blip in your life now. Now you've, now you've completely forgotten. At some point, now you've completely forgotten about it and you're ready to start with the new chapter of your life. And that's all it is. Okay, that's all it is. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, thank you to everybody who shared their rejection stories with me. I did read them and to the ones that uh, were in my DMs and all of that, I did respond. There were some that were so much harder to read and go through um, than others. And really, really always remember it's just a bad day and not a bad life. Very, very important for you to remember that. Until the next video, I'll see you soon.